Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 481. Ready to talk some professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Out on their intertubes and the interwebs, driving through that super information super highway to reach out and touch my friends. And one of those friends is up in Poughkeepsie, New York. He is Mad Mike, and he is tagged in the WWE database for house shows and wrestling challenges and whatever there is in in Poughkeepsie, New York, is something I learned last night on the wrap up. Yes, indeed. Hi, hi, sorry. I I am a cat, five-time Academy Award watcher, Mad Mike. Um, I'm former WWE employee. Hey, Mad wait, Mike, wait, that's and... not fair. I completely heard that on another podcast this morning. <laughs> Oh, well, that's fine. I stole from the Deadpool teaser. So whatever. That's where I heard and, it. There it is. And I am also from the home of Piper's Pit, Poughkeepsie, New York. That's right. That's Man. right. We'll be talking Piper a bit more. Also with us, representing Corpus Christi, where they like to throw people in the golf. It's uh, it's uh, it's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. He is Eamon Payton at Eamon to please on the tweets. You're not wrong, Sor. <laughs> I'm not wrong about anything. I need to fi- figure out what is the... Because you know what? We need to represent you guys. You guys are important to this show. We got a former WWE employee. We got a guy that, that lives by the golf that Travel Guerrero keeps getting thrown into. And we got the man from Johnstown and P. And Damian Sandow and many other people. And Damian Sandow and the Money in the Bank, all that stuff. And we got the man from the town where they once forgot to bring the ring to a WWF show, Bobby FJ Town. We're bringing it full circle. Sadly, yes, they forgot the ring, and we also throw people into the water when, you know, when there's floods. But, you know, you just push them. And they just no, fall. no, the water actually comes and envelops them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. I see. Sad times. I see. But this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Like I said, we talk professional wrestling. You can subscribe to this and the other shows we do in our grand pro wrestling network of shows over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and audio and, and video formats all over the place. And uh, all these guys, they do some great stuff like the Midweek War, the Indie Mayhem Show is our interview series, and uh, of course the Raw Wrap Up, uh, Total Divas, uh, 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 Tough Enough, whatever that other show is. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we're doing a Chikara show soon at this point. I I don't even yes. know anymore uh but yes. great stuff the, uh, the the tna big board i haven't caught up on the tna big board in a few weeks is that still going my mike oh it's still going and people are coming people are going mm-hmm. there's gonna be people leaving this week i assume oh, so it'll be interesting I'll have to catch up on some of that wrestling I hate but... tna <laughs> <laughs> well soon you won't have lucha for a period but anyways i know i'm so sad <laughs> and we you can also fill that lucha void of chikara and we you also drop us a line our phone and email 412-206-wms0 or that email address just like the t-shirt says good times at wrestling mayhem show.com baby go check it out pro wrestling tees.com slash wms and uh check out our friend basic sickness at basic sickness.com and you can drop down to live Live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time for about three hours of wrestling talk every Tuesday night. Uh, and of course, a Patreon, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including our current Patreon supporters, our patrons, of course, Antonio Garza, who joins us across the network, but he also runs the great wrestlingrevolution.com, the wrestlingrevolution.com. Uh, so go check that out, become part of that community as well. Um, and you can also, oh, who's that other guy? Oh, 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 Mo Diggity! Woo! Thank you so much for supporting the show. You'll get a state of mayhem here. I should record it probably later tonight. And uh, in so much fun, fun stuff going on. Uh, with that, uh, uh, there was there anything else I was supposed to plug? No, that's it. That's it. I'm stalling as I write up my title that I forgot to fill out pre-show. Uh, so (laughs) 
Uh, so let's take this a turn. Um, of course, uh, some unfortunate news this past week, but I want to turn it upside down and, and, and make it a little, at least a, a pleasant in this. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper passed um, in the last few days. Was that Friday, I think? We heard about that. Is, is that, does so, that yes. seem about right? So, yeah. uh, cardiac cardiac arrest in his sleep, 61 years of age, mind-blowing. There was actually just the week before TMZ who broke the story. Um, yes, I'm over TMZ as a news source. I'm just accepting it right now. Uh, but the, the, I mean, they, they were talking to him about the Hulk Hogan situation that we illustrated last week here on the show, and he looked great. You know, he's been in so much other stuff. He looked great, even like the, the before he the week before he died. I was watching the unfortunate pro wrestling versus zombies movie that didn't everybody looked like crap on that. But anyways, um, it's it just I, I it it, it, it kind of blows my mind, and especially being so close after Dusty, um, it's just I I, I don't know. It, it, it's not. It's not hitting as hard as a Dusty, um, because I think I'm still in kind of a shock of it. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I go around first thoughts uh, when when you heard that this happened, Mike. I know you, of course, being in in the home of uh, Piper's Pit, where the first one was up in Poughkeepsie, New York. And uh, I know you were sharing some pictures today on the Facebook. I try to pull them up here as we go. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, well, honestly, the uh, the first thing I thought of was a couple of years ago. God, I want to say seven years ago, I went to a Northeast wrestling show and they had um, Roddy Piper there mm-hmm. signing. And mm-hmm. I went with my dad and my dad, uh, he, he always went to wrestling shows with me and um, we got to talk to Roddy for a little bit. And my dad and my dad and Roddy really, really got along. Like it was, kind of scary were they they kind of were they kind of like the same age bracket or something they were the exact same age yeah Mm. um and i have mentioned down here uh my dad also recently passed away around um the holidays Mm -hmm. and my my dad talked to roddy and he's like he he said that it was a really great getting to see like someone who my dad grew up watching a little bit of and Mm -hmm how my dad was able to connect to me through pro wrestling. And Roddy was like, Oh yeah, man, that he he was like, that's really awesome. It's really great that we can bring like families together. And he talked about his son who he was bringing up through wrestling and everything. And I, uh, it just, it just hit me really hard. Like, cause Roddy, he was such a good dude. Like he was just so happy to be there, even though like, the sword just showed the picture he wasn't in the best physical shape at that point but he was just re- like he looked as excited as he did in the early piper's pits like he was full of energy he was really really mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. just he, he talked so much with everyone like we talked to him for about 15 20 minutes like it was just fantastic uh he, he was such a good guy and uh just you know really kind of hit me you know I, I actually like my first thought was like wow piper looks more excited about this picture than you are at this point <laughs> well um the funny thing the funny thing about that picture is um my dad was taking the picture he didn't know how to work the camera okay so that's about the fifth or sixth attempt okay and my dad just kept hitting the button uh-huh. and we didn't know because it wasn't a digital camera right so i didn't know if any of the pictures took so my dad just kept going and going and going, and that was <laughs> the best one that came out where both of us looked moderately happy to be in the photograph. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, you know, I, I got a similar sentiment. I mean, he was here when uh, 2012 with uh, in Meadville for the IWC Superstar Show, and 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 uh, I know Missy is a big fan, and she got to work in the merchandise room, and you know, seeing him come up with the fans, I got to go over and film him a little bit, and uh, we we posted the Piper's Pit actually from that event as well. And he just, I remember he was the guy that came up because, you know, when you do these shows, you know, probably much like that Northeast Wrestling, and this is one of those kind of paid shows, and, and it's really in the, in the end raising money for the school or the boosters or whatever the case was up there. And and he came in, and, and I think he was there the day before that morning and was doing, like, a, what radio can I do? And, and basically it came up to the promoter and says, uh, you know, what, I'll, you know, let's, I'll do everything in my power to make this a great show, basically. And uh, and it, and it's great. It, it, it was just a, a one of the like authentic guys in pro wrestling. It feels at least you know in the dealings that we've had. And and you know there's been some pretty big names up there, and there's some that have not been that great. 
you know um and and that's i'm really i, I you know mike you know and i think we're really fortunate to have uh have been able to uh be in his presence it's amazing so yeah he, he still had the same aura that he gave off mm-hmm. when he was like in his prime I mean, like look, easily I mean, he just he he just exhumed excitement for the business like mm-hmm. he really just did I mean, look at this. I mean, this is a crowd of this is one of the bigger crowds, certainly for IWC, probably not as big as what you guys saw up there at Northeast Wrestling. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it, you know, maybe a thousand people and he's looking around and he's got an expression on his face like he's in front of WrestleMania. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just yeah. it's it, it's it's just amazing. And he completely delivered. And I know uh, Jimmy Nuts, a friend of the show that, uh, that that that, you know, that he was I- involved in this segment here and uh he, he had a big write-up about it as well a lot of guys have encountered it um uh, one of my favorites rj city uh mm-hmm. he, i was just gonna mention him uh bobby you want to mention <laughs> that you want to you want to talk about what he was talking I, about I, I just i just wanted to say i just was gonna mention like real quick how his story about roddy and the the, the lady in the uh the sauna oh i don't know about this one. Oh yeah he, he told a story about uh, a lady him and Roddy went downstairs and they were talking about the business on the way down. They were in towels going down to the sauna. And I guess when they got in there, they, they both saw this middle-aged woman and they, they both smiled at her and sat down and she stayed there, you know? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, right. They continued their conversation while this woman was still in there with them. And Roddy said, now I want you to, to look at me like you're going to beat the, the F out of me. <laughs> And the lady, the lady got up and ran out of the the sauna. <laughs> From his like description of the, it was it was a really good story. I, I enjoyed like all of his stories he told about Roddy on on mm. Facebook and that. One of the great ones, uh, the the one I read was uh, uh, I spent all night talking with Roddy about how to be a great heel. The next morning, I asked him how to be a face, and he looked at me and said, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> that seems about right um amen i don't know i i don't know how much you're into roddy uh, you know as we've we joked about you're you're kind of the young one here and right. and, and maybe ha- didn't didn't observe him certainly in his prime uh live or anything like that but i know you're you're a kind of a history of the game uh, what are your thoughts on piper and his passing or any any memories any thoughts on him well i think like going back to what you said about how it, it is kind of a it was a very shocking thing to uh to learn about uh, mm-hmm. especially when you hear like people talk about like people in the business sort of talk about how like even with Dusty too like I talked to them like last week or, or even the day before you know right, and for right. something to happen so soon like it's it's really depressing um, I, I think I mean Roddy is definitely a quintessential person in wrestling and, and like you said a phenomenal heel uh, and it, I think Roddy I saw a tweet about this and, and Roddy I think really exemplified something that I think Sorg, you try, you tend to bring up a lot on the show about um, sort of wrestlers being when you're in a wrestler, you're there to fill a job and there to fill a certain spot. Mm-hmm. And I think Roddy was that to a to a to a complete T. You know, he wasn't he was never really world champion, but he didn't really ever need to be. No, no. Uh, like he was the, he was the perfect foil for Hulk Hogan. He was you know he he really understood his role in the business and and made a, a living off of it and, and, and made a, a career and a legacy off of it. So um, he's definitely one that, that I think will be remembered for a long time. And someone that I think a lot of people should look to when it comes to being a heel, but also just being, you know, finding your place in wrestling. Right. Right. I mean, I, I, I put a comment on there on, on, on the Facebook that uh, Roddy actually kind of got me a little bit thinking about, um, it, you know, a play off of the, uh, you you be the hero and you live long, long enough to be the villain. But in the case of Roddy, he lived long enough and was so good for long enough that the villain became the face. You know, much like uh, you know, an Eddie Guerrero, Ric Flair gets cheered no matter what these days, even if he's trying to be the heel, right? And uh, and 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 Piper definitely, because I mean, I I'm from the age of. I think I caught just the end, I mean, of, of, you know, rock and wrestling and all that kind of stuff and mostly experienced the, the good guy, Roddy. Right. But he's still Roddy. You know, he's still, he's still, like he was the stone cold of the day, even when he turned face, you know, he was the anti-hero. Um, and I, I can't believe I didn't watch they live until 1998 <laughs> myself. Cause as a, I didn't watch they live until last year. Oh, I, all right. All right. I, side note. I still haven't seen it. <laughs> 
I need to watch <laughs> oh, it. Bobby, Bobby, now I you know. need to. I need to watch it. Now you need to. What, 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 what were your thoughts on that, Mike? I mean, I know it's a kind of an 80s movie and everything, but... It was fantastic. <laughs> it was funny as shit. It's I a- mean, the acting is... I, I I just felt like I was watching the director's cut of the Holly Lo- Hollywood backlot brawl. <laughs> <laughs> the fight scene, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I, just, I no, I mean the whole movie because you know <laughs> the, the beginning of the Hollywood backlot brawl. You have Goldust pulling up in a car. You have Roddy waiting there, and they're talking a little bit before they start the fight. Then you have the big fight, mm-hmm. and then it's uh, people are in their underwear for some reason. <laughs> That's right. That seems about right, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it, it's Bobby, you gotta see it. It's a fun. Yeah, and uh, you know, I watch it. I, this, like, I know this is, I kind of, like, I wish they had put Piper in one of the Expendables movies mm-hmm. before he yeah. passed away mm-hmm. because he would have been phenomenal in that. He would have been absolutely phenomenal in that. Yes. Yes. Um. Um. It, it's, it's, it is also interesting to watch that movie and realize how much of your pop culture came from that movie you maybe didn't realize, especially if you played Duke Nukem. For and instance. how accurate the movie is. What's if that? You look at, well, well if, you a... look at, if you look at society now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty spot on. Oh, there, yeah, it is. There was that scene in South Park where they just took the entire fight and just did it scene for scene with, uh, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't that Timmy, 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 Timmy and Jimmy? Jimmy? Yeah, Timmy and Jimmy. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. So. All right. I have anything, any other thoughts on this? Uh, I, it's um, chat room. Well, if you have Riz, anything to share on, on Piper. Riz is in the chat room. Um, uh, Matt, Matt posted the gif of Roddy cracking a coconut over Snooka's head. Oh. And, um, and Riz posted that Roddy was one of the few old wrestlers who actually loved pro wrestling, mm-hmm. even after wrestling. Yeah. Which yeah. is true. Mm-hmm. You really got that sense from him. Like it wasn't, you know, when he would make appearances on stuff, it wasn't just, I think, to make appearances. You know, it was because he kind of, he, you could tell he loved it. I, th- I think that's one thing that always resonated with his work was, was his love for performing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to come on with a purpose, mm-hmm. not just to make an appearance on like an old school Raw. He wanted to make sure that he motivated someone like a Dean Ambrose or, you know, someone like that. Like he wanted to make sure it made an impact. Right, mm-hmm. right. Roddy Piper, Hillboy Mist. Um, I can't wait. I, I uh, although I, I recently, if you didn't get a chance, there, there's a tremendous documentary. I actually own the DVD of it uh, of Roddy Piper. Uh, I think a lot of those clips kind of showed up in the tribute last night as well. Uh, definitely worthwhile. I hope we are going to see a uh, Roddy Piper week. I, I we we kind of pontificated a little bit. Would they do kind of a round table? Um, unfortunately, you know, I, Dusty would have been tremendous to have on something like that. Well, actually, Hogan would probably have been tremendous to have on something like that. Would have been. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. And um, but but even just Flair, and I don't know who else would stick in. They you stick in there, but Valentine. definitely Flair Valentine, Hacksaw, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That oh, that would be tremendous. That would be amazing. Him and him and him and Hacksaw got like they were best friends on on Legends House, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I kind of all watch Legends House again now. Just... Yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, it, it's really kind of his a little bit of his his kind of going away, isn't it? Is Legends House, mm-hmm. even though I mean, I mean, it was filmed probably in what 2012 because they, they filmed it way before Network finally came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so it's a little delayed as far as that goes, but as far as the last kind of notable thing um what's that and uh he, he was the biggest name on there oh he was sort of, yeah. he absolutely yeah. was he, he was the cornerstone of that thing and mm-hmm. and, and probably equally probably the most entertaining one um so i mean i think i think it's worthwhile if you haven't yet go watch legend house um just in general it, it's really interesting so we have this too many times guys too many yeah. times mm-hmm. but anyways uh i feel remiss to plug something right now but pittsburgh wrestling.com that's what we're doing uh we have a lot of stuff actually in this next week and about a week from today we're aiming to launch indie wrestling.us uh but in the meantime you can go and pick up your copy and you can get riz on there he's on it <laughs> the legend of virgil and his traveling merchandise table it is taking the world by storm i was receiving pictures pictures on social media from the nwa fan fest in charlotte uh of uh, uh um jim Cornette w- had his copy uh gerald briscoe says he approves of of the loan of the uh legend of virgil 
Uh, if you haven't checked out Chair Shot Reality, there is a trailer as well as Virgil reading mean tweets. It's everywhere. <laughs> the reactions have been tremendous. Uh, go get your copy today. Digital download or DVD. PittsburghWrestling.com or Joe-Dombrowski.com. So, by, by the way, Sorg, mm-hmm. the only reason Virgil had a solo's career, Roddy Piper. That's right. That's right. And we, we did kind of joke about last night. And and damn it, Mike, if this might freaking happen, I don't know about the idea that uh, they might bring Virgil on for for something. I'm like telling that. you, if, if you want someone who like was involved in Roddy Piper's story, Roddy yeah. was on commentary at the time. Exactly. And he was like, I remember that was one of the first things I saw in wrestling. Like, I, I didn't really get to see heel Roddy until I watched back the old tapes. Mm-hmm. I watched Roddy cheering on Virgil to break away from Ted DiBiase. I <laughs> Man, mean, I was a Virgil mark because of that. Because I just followed anything that was a good guy at the time, to be quite honest. So, <laughs> But anyways, on that note, uh, but go check that out. And also, even we were showing a bit of the Piper's Pit that's from Night of the Superstars 2. Um, that's really the main part Piper was a part of. I, I don't know if he was, I can't remember if he was involved in the main event of that, of that show, but, um, but, uh, go check any of that out. Pittsburgh wrestling.com. You can get that on digital download. So with that, let's talk about wrestling is fake. Oh, <laughs> the, newest, the newest wrestling is profession. Wrestling. <laughs> wrestling. Oh, wait. Yeah. That would be awesome. Is That'd be a awesome. Championship a bagel. <laughs> oh my God. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Wrestling is like they just have a, a fake WWE title. Um, they they hang kids belts. They use all sorts <laughs> of just like they have little tykes tables. But I guess but 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 seriously, uh, the the story I'm trying to get at here um, is uh, uh, of course uh, we're linked to this Roddy Piper thing. Uh, Ronda Rousey, of course, did uh, uh, dedicate her match, her whole 34-second match, which you can watch on Twitter video. And uh, <laughs> but uh, on Twitter video, uh, uh, but she dedicated it to Rowdy Roddy Piper. And um, and uh, uh, and through all that, Dana White saying uh, uh, really kind of attacking pro wrestling around that, which is one I think very in poor taste because somebody freaking died, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't great timing on his. Well, part at all. it 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 didn't have anything to do with that directly. What what the comment was? Someone had tweeted at Dana White like, "I really want to stay up and watch the Rousey fight, but I'd rather watch WWE for nine ninety nine." So and then Dana just responded like, "I understand, but you don't. That that's how much you pay for fake shit." Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that, I, that, was, I, that was the whole comment. I don't, I don't think Dana White really meant anything by it because he's profited a lot off of fake wrestlers, and mm-hmm. he's about to do it again whenever CM Punk has a match, in a, a fight in UFC. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I would contend, in my personal opinion, uh, I feel like the UFC, I'm I've, I've starting to pay more attention to UFC now than I ever have been, mm-hmm. not because of CM Punk or anything. But just because I feel like they've made more of a point of taking some tropes from wrestling and putting it into their world, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Certainly. I feel like they, they, tend, they tend to tell more stories, I guess, in a sense, uh, as opposed to, you know, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, leg- it's legitimate or real or whatever you want to call it, but it still takes a lot from wrestling nowadays. And it's that that makes me want to watch it more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh I don't know. I don't, I don't really take Dana's comments too seriously. I, I think someone pointed out, uh, uh, I saw on Twitter, uh, this is the same guy that also said that women's MMA would never happen in the UFC. <laughs> so, you know. And it's now the main event. Yeah. So I, it's I, now his only draw. It is, it is, a, it is a, yeah, pretty much. So well, Yeah, because people were saying about how um, they they waited all night till about one a.m. when the, the actual main event started, and then last thirty five seconds, and it was like all the other stuff was just like eh, whatever, you know. What, and that, 
which again is fix. which again is funny. I'm sorry, Bobby. Uh, which no, sorry. again is funny because we're sitting there wondering if the like the like everybody talking all night long amongst our fake wrestler friends that we were at a show and at Denny's afterwards was oh did the fight happen yet? Did the fight happen yet? And we get in the car. It was like oh yeah, here it is. And then I hear Katie in the back saying, "Well, that was interesting." And I'm like, "What?" She's like, "I just watched the fight." I'm like, "Where'd you find the fight at?" Twitter video. <laughs> When you're yeah, uh, charging seventy dollars something that I can catch a recap on Twitter video, I think your business model might have a I, problem. I understand that, mm-hmm. and I get that. But like, like Ronda Rousey has got me. I think has been the one of the main reasons that has got me interested in UFC. Certainly, and, and these quick matches that she's having, these you know less than a minute knockouts, you know that she's uh, and and various other you know ways that she's achieving victory. That's telling a story. She's very much like a Brock Lesnar in a sense, mm-hmm. you know, and, and people could contend. I think there's some wrestling fans that would probably contend, hey, I don't want to see Brock Lesnar dominate a guy for fucking, you know, eight minutes and win, you know? Right. I, she's, I, I, she's female Baron Corbin. Oh, God. Oh, no. no, Bobby, no. <laughs> no, I mean, like, as she's far just as, like, quickly ending, like, matches. But like a she's, but like her, her, yes. The eventual match with Cyborg, she's just going to end of days her, and it's going to be the greatest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping that – because I, I went to a Buffalo Wild Wings on Saturday night to watch the whole UFC show because we wanted to see Rousey. Um, I was really hoping that she would just try to reenact the fight from They Live as much as possible because I – like th- there was a lot of trash talk coming from uh, Beth Correa, and Ronda Rousey really didn't talk trash at all. And she, I will give Beth Correa credit. She was very intense in that face to face. Yes. Like I was like, wow, that lady's got anger issues. But then almost, Ronda Rousey just, you know, thirty five. And 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 Mike, you mentioned like like that Ronda wasn't necessarily talking trash, but she was in in a sense almost cutting promos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so oh yeah. With that. And and that's the thing that's like that's the thing that's been happening in UFC nowadays that hasn't happened in the past. In my opinion, like well, it's it, been a it lot all of... started because of Lesnar. Yeah, mm-hmm. it all started because of Lesnar. Like, uh, and maybe to a lesser extent, uh, Anderson Silva. But when Brock Lesnar was in UFC, everyone was cutting promos. Mm-hmm. Everybody, like you, you, you'd see it built up like a WrestleMania every time there was a big fight, and they tried to do that with this one. It's just the only thing that sucks about real sports is that sometimes the buildup doesn't match the actual fight Mm -hmm. and that's unfortunately uh, entertainment wise that's why pro wrestling will always win in comparison i'm just here so i don't get fined (laughs) 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 that's another sport that's cutting promos thank you bobby yeah The, the promo cutting thing like you can tell in real sports who the wrestling fans are Mm -hmm. because they understand this is regardless of how real or fake the actual competition is. It's all sports entertainment because you have to build a brand. Mm -hmm. Richard Sherman at the end of the Super Bowl. Yeah. Also, I, if you want to contend this whole real versus fake thing, personally, I believe the whole thing is fake. I believe Dana's in on it. I, I, I completely go by the conspiracy theory that Dana and Vince are like this. I I, think too dumb. You know, I, I, I'm not convinced that there's a feud going on here because I, I don't believe Rousey would have been on WrestleMania without any like convincing from Dana whatsoever or some well, relationship. The thing is, I think if Ronda Rousey says to Dana White, hey, I'm going to go do WrestleMania. What exactly is he going to say? It's not like he'll fire her. Right, right. No, as, as, long, as long as she doesn't but... hurt herself, as long as she doesn't hurt herself. He's not saying no. And He's to like, be oh, honest, I'm sorry. you you want to give me a free product well, or something you enjoy? Have fun. But I think Dana's a smart enough man to where he would see that on the table and see the potential of that and just and you know, you know, let not let it go. Like I, I think he would obviously be down for it because mm-hmm. I like I I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but that's my that's my weird conspiracy theory. I think the best part of this whole thing, and I saw someone tweet this, I do not remember who it was. I apologize. I can't quote my source. Um, it was after the Rousey fight. It might have been Brandon. Um, the best part is that Ronda Rousey just beat uh, 
Beth Correa in 34 seconds, and it's going to take her 12 minutes to beat Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> yeah, it, it was Brandon, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I'm like, that. I saw that. I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Well, you know, well, I, you know, I, I, I do enjoy that somebody like, like Dana White, uh, 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 yelled, yelled out the wrestling is fake. You know, the thing that every one of us heard as we got bullied on the school bus, right? Uh, growing mm-hmm. up. And this has just happened in real life. You know, CM Punk talks about how we're the geeks and the geeks are now in control. And seeing the backlash to Dana White is like, yes, wrestling is fake. And it's better than your sport. <laughs> but, by yeah, the way, from, from by the, the way, guys, Game of Thrones is fake too. Oh, damn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, damn. Uh, did, did anybody catch the um, – I think it was – it might have been Gabriel that posted it on uh, his Facebook. I don't know if he posted it on the Mayhem Show account or the, the Facebook uh, group. But um, the um, Max Landis, the one who did uh, Wrestling Isn't Real mm-hmm. or, re- or Wrestling Isn't Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, he did that new the, a video on how wrestling is known as fake. But so are TV and all this other stuff. And, and it was a really cool video. Like, it made me almost, like, really proud to be a wrestling fan, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm not shocked that tons of wrestlers, like, jump down Dana's throat for it. Because, obviously, we get offended by stuff like that. But they have to be much more offended by it from the fact that they are going through it. And, and I think when... Yeah, it is fake. I You know, you don't necessarily want to use that word, but it is fake. But... You know, when you put into the fact of like injuries and and the stuff that goes into actually being a wrestler, yeah, I can see why people would be offended by that because it's basically saying that you what you do is lesser than. Mm -hmm. And it's you know I can understand people I I can understand wrestlers getting very outraged by that. I know like Seth Rollins spoke up and um, I think Austin Aries was another guy that was like very adamant about it. Like Bull Dempsey. Dempsey. Fake Bull, isn't even a Bull good Dempsey, word for it. Bull Dempsey said, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> fake isn't even a good word for it. Whenever like people used to tell me when I was younger that wrestling is fake, I'm like, no, wrestling is scripted. Just like everything else on television. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. E- even, even the UFC commentators, I'm sure they have a script. I'm sure they have things that they have to talk about. I'm sure that they have stuff they have to say before each fight. I mean, I'm fake. Fake is just a word that I think people use. And I think it's a word that people use in a case that they just don't really put a lot of thought into, you it, know, it's, it, a, it's, it's, it's a, a simple word for something right. much more complex. It's a bullying term. Mm-hmm. Right. And sometimes it is. Yeah. Wrestling's a big fat phony. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's exactly what's happening. Dana White is is the bully that's trying to cut down all of us wrestling nerds, which includes the wrestlers, to be honest. Because, uh, geez, how did I put this? The to be a wrestler, we talk about indie indie, Ray, indie mayhem show. How listen, you have to be the biggest wrestling fan to put your body through all this crap to do this thing, right? Okay. So. They're the biggest geeks when it comes to this topic. Not according to most of them on Tough Enough. <laughs> right. Well, I know, right? I know, right? Yeah, yeah. F everybody on Tough Enough, seriously. Um, Fuck that show. Yeah, seriously. It, it's just complete BS. Um, By the way, stay tuned tomorrow for the Tough Enough wrap up <laughs> of me and Jen Carlins. It's, it's just two seconds of you and Jen being like, fuck this show. <laughs> and then asking her about her relationship with Matt. Yes! Just convert the show into something else. We'll put it somewhere else on the network. Anyways, I'm sorry. Uh, we're, but no, it's, seriously, it's a bullying thing. Um, and 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 we we are the geeks in 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 our basements or whatever, uh, talking about pro wrestling. But the pro wrestlers are the geeks as well, and it's really trying to cut down them in that industry. And uh, Vince McMahon is the biggest nerd of all. The thing I always thought about when people would tell you that wrestling's fake, it's like they're trying to insult you by saying. You know they're not actually fighting, right? Like, you know, you know Sam- they know who's going to win. I'm like, of course I know that. Like, that doesn't mean it isn't real. Like, these aren't CG people. This isn't like, it's not a padded surface. You know, it's you know, it's actual physicality. To be it fair, John Cena's nose, John Cena's nose was CG'd. 
<laughs> <laughs> as it happened it was it was it was makeup and special effects and mm-hmm. practical effects and all that stuff they had time to rig that up when his nose exploded <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of that was a lot of uh corn syrup that kept spilling out of you know the the proboscis they made for him yeah, that's probably a weirder part to like, uh, like, like, a, like we mentioned that the Dana comment was like so close to the Robbie thing. It was more, it's so weird that it was more closer to the John Cena getting his nose busted open. Like, I, I feel like that was, I don't know. I just think that the, the idea of like you don't like something that's predetermined. Yeah, I guess that's why UFC plays into a, like, People prefer UFC, but like I said before, UFC takes a lot from wrestling, and and I don't think a lot of people realize that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. On that note, let's know your thoughts. The UFC wrestling is fake argument. In the meantime, you know what's real and it's still real, damn to me, pepperoni pizza. Oh yes, Slice <laughs> on Broadway. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com. Supporting the Wrestling Mayhem Show and our fine Tuesday night cast here at Sorgatron Media with a perfect pepperoni pizza in Pittsburgh for podcasting. Go check them out. They're in the South Hills here at Pittsburgh Beachview, uh, right along the tracks. You can get off the tracks if you're downtown Pittsburgh. Just take the train. There's only one of them, and uh, take it to the south and 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 hop in here. Or Carnegie PA on the way to the airport down on Main Street. Uh, you can follow them on the Twitters at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters or Slice on Broadway on Facebook and uh, the Instagrams. And, uh, and and let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. So with that, we'll take a look at the little bit from last week at Sorgatron Media, and we'll be right back. Um, also, uh, this is also very important because I have Chachi on the show. If you go to the website uh, for Chubby Shorts on the bright bottom right-hand side, mm-hmm. it says... Share if you hate pants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So they're just... Well, let me... Uh, let me- do that right now yeah you're like i love these people we are best friends i, I mean they're yeah. it, it's this very human aspect and very i i just really like their their product and like i said their short videos <laughs> what's you that to him he you knows to only be the why would they possibly listen to john cena he's only been the top guy in the company for a damn decade sorg because, because they don't give creative control because they don't give creative control in their me? contracts why anymore talk to the man talk to the man over there i can't even <laughs> Can't he feels sword. he can't reason with. You. They don't give creative control in their contracts anymore. Not since uh, racist Hulk Hogan <laughs> <laughs> in WCW ran that oh, to the ground. Right back around. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour gameathon for youth arts programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium or join us live chachiplays.com find out how you can make a difference too and donate today chachiplays.com up down down left right left right BA BA start yeah we are back go check out all that so much more sorgatronmedia.com also chachiplays.com there's a great um uh, marathon we're going to be doing right here if you join us here at live.wrestlingmamshow.com live.sorgatronmedia.com we will live friday night the 7th through the 8th if i have my dates right uh live from the tunesium in time town pittsburgh uh you can donate at chachiplays.com it helps out the uh, arts programs in pittsburgh for underprivileged children through a couple of great great organizations here uh, and we're gonna have fun some mayhem show guys are gonna be involved with it and we're gonna have a blast so let's get into the big question dj lunchbox is on leave this week but uh we have one filling in from the maddest of questions from mad mike what you got buddy all right. Um, I I've been I've been watching Ring of Honor, and um, mm-hmm. I've been having difficulty getting into the show. And I've been trying to figure out why I think that is because uh, they just celebrated their two hundredth episode. I've only seen about ten of them, so because that's when they came to Destination America, and I thought it was kind of weird that they're coming to a new audience. But they already have so many established storylines, established roster, you know, all things like that. And it's really hard to kind of transition into becoming a fan of that show. So I wanted to hear from you guys. What do you think would be one of the best uh, ways to put on a new wrestling show, a new network with a new audience, new eyes watching it, if you already have an established roster and storyline? 
And you can't say Lucha Underground because they didn't have an like we were introduced to everyone on that show. Mm-hmm. So it that that's kind of like because I want to enjoy Ring of Honor. I want to see more or less suggestions like how we can fix it. Okay. Super case. Okay, I, and I think. I, I, I don't want to defend Ring of Honor too much, but here, but I think it was just like this was a new TV deal. There wasn't a consideration, right? But you're saying right. there should be. There should now. Now, is your contention um, um, the show has moved, like say WWE moving Raw from 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 USA to Spike? Is it a continuation show, or is it a we have the Ring of Honor pro- roster? We just started a, a new show here. Um, it can be either or. I mean, because. They clearly had the Sinclair broadcast, and they don't change anything from the Sinclair show, where mm-hmm. people have been watching since episode one, mm-hmm. to a Destination America show, where there's a whole bunch of new eyes on it. And, like, they don't – because there's one thing you can say about WWE programming. They give you enough replays and enough backstory to allow you to tiptoe into the storylines, even if you don't fully get it. They tell you who the characters are, whether through commentary or through in-ring promos. Right, right. Okay, okay. Oh, anybody have this one? I got um, my, I got my okay. answer. Okay. Uh, and and you mentioned we can't say Lucha Underground, so, but I will say another show that happens around the same time, uh, and that's the new the new show launched by Chikara, Journey into Chikara. Uh, I think when you format your wrestling show like ring of honor is doing and like most wrestling shows do, where it's just like sort of a series of matches to build a storyline, like, like, like a regular wrestling show. Uh, when you're on in front of a new audience, I can see where that can be a problem with a established roster and, and some established stories and stuff like that. I feel like Chikara did a really good job their first episode. And, and they've only had one episode so far of introducing one, what Chikara is Two, a lot of their characters and a lot of their motivations uh, and and just the style of wrestling and and it allowed people who – I think somebody who has never watched Jakar before could watch that episode and understand the stories that they were telling. Um, the, the, and it takes somebody who can describe it, who can – you know, educate people. They need to take the time to educate people on, on certain things. But, uh, I think they did a fantastic job. Like one of this episode, for example, I think really it centered a lot around the storyline they're doing with, uh, Oleg the usurper, who is a part of the wrecking crew, which is a a heel stable, uh, led by Sidney Bacabella. However, they're in a, they're, they're doing a year long tournament of, uh, uh, called the, uh, uh, challenge of the immortals where team members got drafted and Ola got drafted onto a different team. So there, there's basically a tension where he's working for Sidney Bacabella, but he's on this other team. Um, and, and they did a really great job of, te- of educating people on that, mm-hmm. uh, which is not something that's easy to do. Uh, I think that one hour Saturday morning style show is a better way to do something like that as opposed to do, taking it the route of a normal, of a normal wrestling show. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think from that, you mentioned Saturday morning shows, and you talk about introductory kind of situations. Um, I remember Saturday morning slam. And remember how much that, again, that. you are introducing people <laughs> because you're introducing these wrestlers and characters to kids, right? It's so hopefully for the first time. And and maybe that's why back in the day when we had like Wrestling Challenge and Superstars, you had more vignettes introducing people. Because there was more kind of time to do that, and you stumbled on this thing, right? And um, but but I like the Saturday Slam style where it was these characters doing these things, introductory things. Check this person out, and um, and 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 having that jumping on point. I, we don't need to know everybody's complete holy crap backstory, but but I think there's definitely something lost when we're watching Monday Night Raw. You know, you kind of kind of catch on now, right? And I don't. And, and, and Ring of Honor is doing the same thing, right? Uh, where they're not giving you a lot of what is this? Uh, what? Because if you, you drop in a Ring of Honor, I'm with you. You, you. you like the Truth Commission just seems so freaking random, right? And it's gone through so uh, many House different of, things. House Especially House since of Truth, it's called the House of Truth. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the Truth Commission was the uh, stable in WWE. Thank you. I, I, <laughs> Jackal, Sniper, Recon, and Kurgan the entire is, I, I've been to the House of Truth. Why didn't I remember it? Um, but anyways. Sorry. What if Kurgan was Ring of Honor? Sorry. sorry. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, but uh, but no, 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 no. I, I, I like that introductory thing. Like the main show doesn't have to be so 1.0 on, on stuff like that. But but I, I, I'm kind of I love that Saturday night, Saturday morning slam feel to it. And I feel like um, I mean, Lucha does this right because they they're like why is puma so freaking important you know and you get a little a little montage uh, vignettes montages i think that's the way to do it i it just you can just have your match and tell that story and the, and the announcers are good they'll tell you the motivations uh, unfortunately i don't think we get a lot of those anymore that are really and, really good at it so another thing about roh sorg mm -hmm. we get the benefit of having mandy leone tell us about what's going on inside ROH. Right. Everybody on Destina Destination America doesn't. See, wait, man, what, what is, what even is though, inside man, ROH? Even though Mandy Lone is kind of like static, not really. No, inside, no. Inside 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 ROH, ROH is, is kind of like a, it's kind of like a, like, like kind of how Sword mentioned. It's like a recap sort of thing yeah. of like, here's a storyline, mm -hmm. basically detailing the storyline through like promo packages uh, yeah. and stuff like that. And, and, and oh, to be so honest, that sounds amazing. No, no, see, the, 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 this is this is a workaround because the way Ring of Honor does their they have their live tapings and then they have all the live events and they don't put all the production in, like they're post producing all the all the announcers and everything, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure, or at least they, they have to do a lot of that because like a lot of times you say this they're partially happened. doing it. Yeah, they're 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 doing this like we film so many weeks of TV, then these events happen in between that we can't really address on the TV tapings we did, but we address them here in this package. It's really just a weird workaround because of the way they do their production. And, and put them yeah. on video on demand because uh, they do their commentary live, and it's it's a right, weird, right. It causes a weird like disconnect. Another right. thing with ROH, I think they're beholden to Sinclair because Sinclair is part owner owner of ROH, right? Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. And, so. and they have to do what Sinclair wants, right? And they can't really gear it towards Destination but, America what they want, right? But but I mean, but more about what what can we do exactly. as a show, not not what to fix the situation of Ring of Honor as it is. Uh, did anybody? Get there. Uh, I didn't, I didn't okay, get to go, go ahead, Bobby. Um, what I would do with a new federation, I would invade TNA and tur slowly turning in and sl slowly turn it into another federation, <laughs> uh, much like Jeff Jarrett is doing. Bobby, stay tuned for Impact. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. Oh, you mean Amped? No, I mean Impact. Stay, oh, stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, I just no, no, no. Like, check out Global Force Wrestling's Amped. Yeah, that's what on, they, on, that's a what I said. <laughs> on a network we don't know exists yet. Yeah. But I like would it be as simple as doing yeah. a separate commentary track for Destination America? No. Oh well, that's hard. That's time. That's money. They're not doing it. They don't have yeah, the budget. I, have you have you been to a Ring of Honor show recently for a TV taping? They don't have the budget. Nope. They do not yeah. have the budget. It's not. Well, I can I can tell that by the lightings and the graphics. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. No, no. I even the TV taping looks moderately better than an indie wrestling setup that that I oh, yeah. do they're or doing, attend. They're doing what they came with, what they got. And exactly. I, I I like ROH every week. I I look forward to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's more about the wrestling anyway. So that's kind of the charm of it is that it mm -hmm. is like really just an indie wrestling on TV. And, and okay, yeah, but see, I call it indie wrestling, and everyone gives me shit about it. No, I agree with you completely. No, I'm with I mean, you. I'm with you. That's what it is. I mean, I you kept know? saying it's televised house shows with commentary mm -hmm. because that's to me is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Like I still don't know. Like I figured out what the decade was only through another podcast I listened to. I don't know what the kingdom is. I don't know what Red Dragon is or why they have two capital hey, Red letters. Red Dragon's awesome. Because yeah, that's they, they, they have two capital letters because of someone that's in TNA right now. Like, are they in the Dominican Republic? I don't know. It's there's got to be a reason for spelling your team name that way. To be fair, the decade not what it used to be since Jimmy Jacobs left. <laughs> this is true. This is true. True. All right. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to give away RWA's Resurrection 2015, one of the bloodiest matches I've seen in a long time with War Games. And of course, a TLC match with friends of the show, Generation Dead, Gory, and G Raver against the Forbidden Warriors that got pretty crazy. So go check that out. Also available on PittsburghWrestling.com. Hashtag SWMS Big Question on Twitter with your answer to his question. What? How would you, how would you want to boil this down? How would you do a new wrestling show basically right like how would you yes. format a new wrestling show to get it over right if you, if you had an established roster oof we gotta fit, fit that in 140 characters in the meantime no last week 
last week we had um, a big question that was, what do you miss? What do you miss from your childhood and such about uh, wrestling? Uh, a lot of these guys are going to get a copy of IWC's The Dance, which included Tommy Dreamer, Dalton Castle, RJ City, and somehow Justin Labar of Cherished Reality in the main event for the IWC title. Um, fake limbs were involved in this. Antonio Garza, he emails us his question, his answer to it. What does he miss from old wrestling? Surprises! I miss the, uh, the, 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 the upright... This is weird with the font. I apologize. Uh, so I missed the uh, surprise signing and debut and the commentators shitting themselves as to why someone has jumped. But now we just get the whole development system and that kills any type of surprise. Uh, and the whole name, uh, uh, whole changing names and gimmicks. And then they debut and Saxon and Cole just go, oh my. Whatever happened to uh, that fire of JR screaming at his legs and saying, that's Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, and Perry Saturn. They don't work here. What in God's green earth are they doing here? By God. I'm with you on uh, that. That still happens from time to time. Okay. Well, like, like, uh, like, well, like Samoa Joe. Good sample. Well, Good no, example. he's referring to their, yeah, he's referring to how Byron Saxon like reacted to it. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that, um, I, I we obviously we don't have a big company like WCW to where that can that can happen in a sense, but um, I I, I you know I, I can see his point, but I think there's I think that still exists in WWE to mm -hmm. uh, to a certain degree. Doesn't also, happen. we didn't have the internet back in the Attitude Era. That's true too. True too. Not to that. I mean, we had AOL keywords and stuff. <laughs> like, like I said. We didn't have the internet back in the attitude era. Do you do you really think that if the internet, that if Twitter was as prevalent as it was back in 1996, Hogan joining with Hall and Nash would have been a surprise? Not, no, not quite as much. It no. would not no. have been a surprise at all. All right, from the uh, from the Twitters, uh, Lanford Paul says, uh, "Larger than life characters, heels that truly scare you. The mystic of not knowing what was real and what wasn't." Um, also, Half Gone uh, out there says he misses having a regular general manager. The authority just doesn't do it for me, and they kind of disappeared recently. So, um, Mike, you said that you missed that, that from uh, Classic Wrestling is the King of the Ring pay per view. I'm with you on that yes. one. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, a one night tournament. I, I, I in the age yeah. of the network, we should be able to have a one night tournament for something. They may bring it. Well, they, well, they didn't. They, they sort of did. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they kind of did, but it wasn't a one night tournament. Yeah, yeah. Because the one night tournament adds intensity to it because you have guys wrestling multiple matches. Mm hmm. Certainly. Uh, so let us know what you think. Hashtag big question. Guys, ProWrestlingTees.com. We got t-shirts like this one. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Great stuff. Uh, designed by the great Alex Cars, who's helping us with IndieWrestling.us coming up. Go check it out. Some great stuff like the, uh, hey, Gold Dust has some stuff out there that you can't find on WWE.com, WWEShop.com. We got our stuff there. A lot of great wrestlers represented. Pro Wrestling Tees is taking over the freaking world, guys. It's everywhere. Everybody is on this that matters. And we're on there, too, somehow. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Also, you can go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We have uh, a great Spreadshirt uh, uh, store as well. Uh, you go click on that Mayhem Club. I know uh, uh, Mainstream Matt has his shirt. Uh, but you go over there. Go roll down below the Pro Wrestling Tees and check out our Spreadshirt shop. We have some stuff, including the... Uh, our, our uh, Don't Be a Smart Ass t-shirt we came up with a few weeks ago. You can be Riz. is some insertcoin2begin.com. Are you a Chachi Says guy? Were you happy that he returned? Or uh, all proceeds for the Chachi Plays sweatshirt and t-shirt go to uh, our most recent uh, 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 charities for Chachi Plays uh, for Kids, which is happening this weekend. So please go check it out. Support the show and wear some mayhem. Thanks a lot for everybody who does and, and wears the threads on their back. Okay, we do have some fan mail also included. Actually, we have one piece of fan mail. Um, uh, but uh, uh, this one is from uh, Ciro. He puts one in again. Uh, he just wanted to remind us. Uh, uh, thanks, WMSers. Just a quick thing. Uh, thanks to our savior, Stephanie McMahon, for all she does for us. Hashtag Davies <laughs> Revolution. Hashtag thanks, Steph. Thanks. So 
There, he had to get that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, Steph. Thanks for thanks thanks sarcastically for giving that eight year old kid, you know, a moment to like have his m- moment with his favorite wrestler. Tony, I get I get what you're saying. That's a weird that's a weird week to put that email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, so, she's well, on the Pittsburgh uh, Children's Hospital Board of Trustees now. She is. She certainly is. Also, wow. can we say something about that kid? Hmm. Um, that that kid, I, I believe his name is now Drax Shadow. Can you wait, can you also explain to me because I didn't get to see this? What what happened? I, I heard about okay. it. You guys All mentioned right. it. I'll, I'll break the whole thing down for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a kid. Uh, I believe eight years old. Um, he's beaten cancer four times. Wow. At, at eight years old, he submitted a video to Tough Enough of him beating the crap out of his Iron Man stuffed animal. And um, Triple H and Stephanie responded with a video chat with him saying that they were so impressed with his uh, with his video that they wanted to sign him to a contract immediately from a Money in the Bank briefcase. Hmm. And they said uh, that he could come to Raw and he could get in the ring with his favorite superstar to sign the contract. And the best part is that he said his favorite superstar was Stardust. That's amazing. Which is fantastic. And he he uh, he was brought out during one of the commercial breaks. Stardust came out with him. Stardust actually, um, I someone made him custom Stardust gloves, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And uh, uh, Stardust helped him up the steps and. The kid slid under the bottom rope all by himself, which was amazing. Because you can you can tell this kid has dreamed of this for, you know, five years or whatever. <laughs> but, like, uh, he went in there, he signed the contract, and Triple H asked what his ring name was. He said it was Drax Shadow. And he said, all superstars have to have a catchphrase. What is your catchphrase? And he, not, not even hesitation, don't fear the darkness fear the shadows and that is single-handedly a better name better character arc and a better catchphrase than roman reigns has ever had <laughs> by the way every every indie wrestler is stealing that name and catchphrase yes, right now absolutely mm-hmm. because that is better than have at least half the people in ring of honor at least half the people in wwe at least 90 percent of the people in tna James Storm's wish he was that kid. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and uh, he signed he signed the contract, and it was awesome. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, sorry, something on Facebook just popped up that just made me pause. It's Pro okay, wrestling. You're Pro wrestling. Porn. Amen, we'll talk about this later. Uh, but anyways... Um, no, that's awesome though. I, I love that they're doing stuff like this, and 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 it's definitely their charity side and everything. But um, it, that's that's really cool and uh, a fun little share right there. I put a picture of a hot dog up. Was it that? What? No, that it wasn't that. <laughs> no, Bobby, it's not. It's not that. It's not that. It's a hot dog. <sighs> Anyways, pro wrestling. Uh, time to find out what you guys learned from wrestling this week. Who wants to go first? Oh, he's got his hand up. Uh, Sorg, Sorg, mm-hmm. do, do you know what I learned? What'd you learn, buddy? I learned that Stardust has failed this city. Oh, jeez, this is happening. This is happening. Oh my God, you guys don't know how excited I am for this. Stephen Amell is gonna be on Raw Monday. He may be dressed as the Green Arrow. He may shoot Stardust <laughs> the- in the face with a toy arrow. I don't know what's gonna happen. The picture, the it. picture on that it kept showing alludes to. It's going to be not Steve Amell. It's going to be the Green Arrow on Raw next yes. week. I don't know. I think someone's going to get their ass sued. Uh, but anyways, that's amazing. That's, that's so great. I'm saying, and for all you guys who don't like this, the dude does his own stunts. Oh, He's this a wrestling I didn't know. fan. I think, I think this is going to be what we wanted Mickey Rourke versus Jericho to be. Oh, jeez. I think this is going to be really, really good. You think he's secretly training? Uh, yeah, I'm sure he is. I'm wow. absolutely positive he is. He was on a movie with Seamus. He did Ninja Turtles with Seamus. That's true. That's true. If Seamus didn't teach him how to bump a few times while they have the pads there, then what the hell's going on? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Wow. I, I Okay. Uh, Eamon, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week. Uh, sometimes no matter how how much you watch wrestling or how much you think you know or, or know about wrestling, uh, there can always be something new that can happen that will make you gush. Uh, and, and to me, that was the Seth Rollins-Neville match from Raw. Mm-hmm. Them executing two near falls that were probably the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. I The last the, – the near fall for the Red Arrow – was one of my favorite things I've seen in a long time. Uh, and and I love, I, I think as far as like protecting people, they have really done an amazing job of protecting and building Neville. Mm-hmm. Um, he's technically almost beaten John Cena and Seth Rollins. Like that's amazing. And, and his finisher has been kept safe. Like it, it it's, it's wonderful. Uh, and and going back to the indie wrestlers in the world stealing the uh, the eight year old kid's running name, everyone's going to be stealing that finish. Everyone is going to be stealing that finish now. Amazing. What about you, Bobby? I learned the best kind of party is a super kick party, and Mad Mike doesn't like fun. <laughs> no, I don't like idiots screaming. <laughs> But it's Steve Carino is a gentleman and, 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 and if and if you're not familiar, watch uh watch the Young Bucks on ROH this week versus uh his friend of the show, Ray Monroe. Awesome and his tag team partner, Hanson at War Machine. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I learned, listen, listen, uh, indie wrestling we'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, it was a fun night with the IWC Approving Grounds 4 in White Oak, PA, and there's so many talented wrestlers on there, and there are so many great, great matches. But I do have to say, I have to give match of the night to a uh, friend of the show, Chess Flexor, against Space Monkey! Oh, I love me some Space oh, Monkey. Oh, look at Space so Monkey. So sad I missed this. Oh, um, Space Monkey. Wait. wait. What? <laughs> I'm, I'm, wait, what? I, I'm just looking at this video. Is that Commander never- Chimp? Have you not out listened out. to us for the last couple of months, like, gush over Space Monkey? We've been talking about Space Monkey for a while. He's been I around have, since Meadville. I have a vine of Space Monkey. He's great. Look at that. He's a Space Monkey. I I have no words. And, and would you be surprised if I told you he was trained by Paul London? No. <laughs> no. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was Paul London. <laughs> Man. I mean, seriously, would you be surprised if that was Paul London? Well, no, 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 no but <laughs> no, but I would be mad that he didn't say hi. Oh, when he, came. he should, he should step out of that like Dalton Castle. <laughs> yeah, you should have, you should have monkey boys, right? You should have yeah. monkey boys from the uh, from the Facebook. Alex Carr's learned that wrestling still has a share of magical moments. Thanks, Kevin Owens. He's been doing amazing lately, of course. Uh, Mike, you also learned that you haven't even watched Raw yet, and you're already more excited for Elimination Chamber than you were for Payback. Did I get an old one? This is May 19th. Wait, what? That's what an old hell? one. Holy crap! May That's 19th. An old one, sorry. I'm uh, sorry. While you're looking for the new one, <laughs> while you're coming for you. While you're Come looking for the new one, I will. I will also say that I learned that um, the entire company of TNA Wrestling can also be acted out if you follow the, along the plot of Speed. The movie. Hmm. Interesting. Matt, oh. Matt Carlin's and I had an intervention with each other after the after the midweek war. Oh, was that we, the the you look through you you walk through the looking glass moment yeah, that um, I saw on Twitter? Right, I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll just give a brief list of the similarities that we made. Yes, this is a written down list. I'm not, I'm not bullshitting anyone. Put it on paper. Uh, Dixie Carter is Sandra Bullock. Uh, Jeff Jarrett is Keanu Reeves. Naturally. Her angle is the bus driver that gets shot and can't do his job for the rest of the time. Um, Vince Russo would, of course, be Dennis Hopper. Uh, Sting is the woman that tries to leave the bus and gets blown up. Um, Billy Corgan is the man driving the Corvette that tries to save people along the way and ends up only attracting Keanu Reeves. Um, Ethan Carter is Jeff Daniels, the guy who tries desperately to save the bus but ends up getting killed uh there were a lot of things when they when they jump the the gap in the bridge that's going from spike tv to destination america (laughs) and right now tna is at the airport circling the runway as they run out of gas wow right 
Wow, that's that's pretty we, good. Oh, okay, I we found, had a long discussion about it. Sork. I found there, there were more watched. on there that I didn't read. I've but never you'd have to Speed. really watch the movie Speed. Watch uh, the movie Speed again in the context of TNA, and I don't know which one you'll appreciate less, but you'll appreciate one a lot more. Wow. I, oh, you'll you'll appreciate TNA. <laughs> I, I also learned, I also learned that you shouldn't uh, walk up to Kevin Owens and ask for an interview because you will get scared. Shitless. <laughs> Ask JoJo. Oh, <laughs> uh, poor JoJo. All right. On the uh, uh, Facebooks, uh, Matt Connors learned that Dean Ambrose, this is from 10 hours ago, so I know it's today. Okay. Uh, I learned that Dean Ambrose is now trying to seduce the soccer moms of America by somehow losing his shirt in every match. Okay. Mike, you d- learned you didn't know that his kids played soccer? Uh, I, I was calling Jen the soccer mom. Yes. Uh, I. Yeah. They look like they'd be <laughs> soccer players. Uh, I, uh, the Daniel learned that Submission Sorority might ha- need a new name thanks to the internet pervs everywhere. Ooh. Ooh, I didn't think about that. JBL already called them the Submissive Sorority. So. Uh, Kyle learned that the heroes we grew up watching are falling off fast. Keep repairs for Jimmy Snook. He already did. He killed a chick in the 80s. So. Well, the, he's the referring to the fact that he got diagnosed with cancer. He what? He did. Yeah. Yes, I didn't did. know that. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yes, I'm stopping Excellent all answer. Jimmy Snuka jokes now. Uh, so uh, prayers, prayers to him then. Um, Garza learned that WWE didn't uh, learn from their mistake. And once again, they had JBL tell their loyal fans that they're stupid for paying 50 bucks for a pay-per-view. If they're giving you that money, you say thank you, not call them stupid. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, Riz plays a uh, colleague on, on Riz plays games. Go check that out. Uh, I learned that, uh, no, seriously, he's, he's trying to beat the Royal rumble with just a great colleague from number one. You can probably do it. Like it's not, uh, he's on attempt number four, I think. So I learned, I learned Riz is slightly insane. Mm-hmm. It's, so, it's pretty cool. difficult to, to win a Royal rumble as the first entry with anyone. Right. It's very difficult to do that. Uh, Gabriel learned that the uh, that he cherished Roddy Piper. He was a true mentor. He grew up around him. His father was a mechanic for the auto shop he owns in Portland. Wow. That, wow. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and Cars learned that pro wrestling is fake. Thanks, Dana White. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. And also from the Twitters, I think I... Oh, Oh, that's what I linked. That's why I linked the wrong one, I think. Is that no? No, I didn't put the Twitter one in. From the chat room, um, Hot Wheels learned that he loves him some Space Monkey. Yes. Um, and Riz learned that playing his great Kali on WWE 2K15 alone is just maddening. Also, New Day clapping is the best part of Raw. Awesome. And we can't really argue with that. Nope. Yeah, really. Okay, and what did you learn? Uh, uh, Habs Man 72 learned that the greatest uh, of them all are vulnerable and human R.I.P. Roddy Piper. So there you go. Uh, also, uh, Ed Burke says that some fans will cheer for the heel flattening someone's nose uh, off if it's the right nose. Uh, I think. Oh, yeah, they were, really, they were really happy that Seth Rollins broke John Cena's face last night. And all of them mm-hmm. bought the new T-shirt, which was and, amazing. Uh, Cena's not going to be on Raw next week. No. I learned... Uh, I also learned WWE has the greatest shirt of all time. Yes, yes. <laughs> Seth Rollins' new shirt. Go check it out. But, um, um, he is going to be on Tough Enough next week. Again? John Cena. Really? Oh, oh John Cena. Okay. Yeah. But wow. Seth Rollins. That's gonna be. They said they said that it's going to be his first televised appearance since Seth Rollins broke his nose. So. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, continent. <laughs> He's going uh, to be playing note. the pipe organ in the basement of the Performance Center. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my the God. Last one. <laughs> Everybody, Don't thanks worry. a lot for joining can you, us. Wait, wait, can you picture? Can you picture the in the pipe? <laughs> oh, oh my God! Nikki love- Bella, he kidnaps Nikki Bella and takes her downstairs to the basement. Oh, I love it, oh, guys! God damn it, we need to make that a thing. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you for joining us. Join us. Uh, subscribe. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This and other shows. And uh, please drop us a line to 412-206-WMS0 uh, for the hotline or that email address. 
Good times. Good times at WrestlingManShow.com. And uh, thanks to Riz for live tweeting with us all night long. Thank you to the chat room. joining us at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Who's joining us on the Indie Mayhem Show, Eamon? Joining us this week on the Indie Mayhem Show will be a, a local wrestler down here in Texas by the name of Cherry Ramones. Find out more about Cherry uh, in our exclusive interview with him. Uh, coming up next, if you're watching live. Spoilers, it's a dude. It is a dude. Sorg thought it was a woman when I first told him. He told me, he was like, oh, you're getting a lot of lady wrestlers. I'm really digging this lately. He's like, yeah, he's a dude. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so serious you were there, Sorg. Spoilers. He's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you at Chachi Plays this weekend. ChachiPlays.com starting Friday night right here in the live stream. We hope you guys uh, go, can check in with us and join us and help us keep seeing for 24 hours as we stay awake and watch Chachi play video games. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.